very much for joining me on this video regarding when not to fertilize your orchids. I know that we like to have big growths, nice spikes, and lots of blooms, but there comes a time that too much love is not a good idea. And I'm going to talk to you about some examples as to when to stop fertilizing so that your orchids can do what they would normally do out in nature, be it because of drought, depending on the time of year. So let's go and have a look at some examples. I hope that you find this video interesting and helpful. So let's start with my battered and bruised looking Cattleya moscom. This is a good example as to when to stop fertilizing because it has stopped growing anything regarding a new growth, including new roots, even though it is still growing roots in the pot. You can see there, I've got a root tip and I've got another root tip there. Those roots are just, let's say, little stragglers from all the activity before. Whatever has been put into the orchid leading up to this point in time when fertilization stops is already in the orchid and is being utilized. But the orchid is not growing actively per se. All the eyes are still snug up against the pseudobulbs. There is no movement, nothing in the sheath. And at this point, it is time to stop fertilizing. No active root growth, no new growth growing. Stop with the fertilizing. The best time to stop fertilizing as well, if your orchid tells you you've overcooked it and it doesn't like what you're doing. Too much love once more. And this is my Fragopedium Garen Weaver. When you see leaf tips like this, brown, just the tips, that is too much fertilizer. And then you can stop what you're doing. Stop with everything. Just use fresh water, no supplements or anything. Leave it be. Slipper orchids are very, very notorious slow growers. So their metabolism is not able to use what you're putting in. And it will show with leaf tip dieback or leaf burn per se. This is a good time just to cut it back to nothing. It'll grow anyway. While an orchid is being transitioned into the new setup, let's say in my case, Lekka and self-watering, or any orchid that you get in and you've cleaned up the roots, it's just come into your environment. It is growing brand new roots and you are trying to hold on to the old roots that it came with. If you were lucky enough to get some viable roots after you've cleaned everything up, do not fertilize the orchid. These roots are precious. It is the future and they need to grow into the media without getting root burn or any kind of dieback. The energy that is being exuded right now by this orchid, which is my Catliantha white bridal, is astounding because she's also growing a new growth while she's pushing those roots. The fertilizer could cause root burn. It could damage the velamen. And at this point in time, the only thing the orchid needs to do is get plenty of fresh water to keep those roots growing to keep the humidity around the base so that they can keep growing, but absolutely no fertilizer. Anything that the orchid has in her own storage organs will be enough for her to push new roots. Adding fertilizer is only going to risk other issues which could compromise the roots. This is my Lelia sanguiloba. I want to show you an orchid that looks like it is struggling. It looks like it's leaning because of lack of strength in the pseudobulbs. It is in the process of growing roots actively. And I am not applying fertilizer. Do not try and intervene at this point either. The storage organs will maybe shrivel up. The new growths may not be as substantial as what you want them to be. But at this point in time, the focus is the roots. And there's a big risk to intervene at this point in time with fertilizer. New roots have a Teflon effect anyway. They won't absorb any kind of water. And intervention is only going to cause issues. So if you see your orchid is a little bit stressed and struggling, don't intervene, it'll be fine. Eventually, when the roots make it into the pot, either an old pseudobulb in the back will die back, that is collateral damage, 
and the other pseudobulbs that still have it in them, they will plump up again. Again, very slow metabolism for orchids, and that can take months, if not to a whole year. But if you intervene thinking that you can do something about it at this stage, then you're probably gonna have a worse outcome than if you had just left it alone and let the orchid get established without fertilizer. Let me just talk about one exception because why not? When we say do not, suddenly there is an exception. That applies to the orchid hobby as well. New root growth. Do not let any fertilizer touch new roots, even on an orchid that has an established root system. Even though it is established, whatever grows new, do not let any fertilizer touch those new roots. If you have to water, because that is what we have to do, an established orchid still needs water, fertilizer, etc. But when the new roots grow, make sure that you water around the edge, away from any kind of new roots. This is my Guariante guatemalensis, and her new root growth at the beginning of the season was sensational. They have now all grown into the pot. But of course, because of her size, she needs a lot of help growing new growths, etc. So we do continue fertilizing at this point, but don't let that water come anywhere near the new roots. So that is the exception. New root growth, but in an established orchid. Now let's get back to when not to fertilize. I'm going to single out a species for this point. We spoke about the moscomb. Do not fertilize when there is no active growth happening. Let's say new growth or new roots. Those are hybrids. So there is a little bit of a thing here when we talk about resting. And that's why I'm singling out a species. This is Lelia perinii. And species orchids have their quirks because there's no interference from any kind of other cross in there. So when your orchid is resting in a sense that also no new growth, no new roots, there is a time where there is absolutely no fertilizer. And that's why I'm singling this species out because they are very, very clear in their rhythm. There's no mishmash. A resting orchid literally is doing just that. If she was in a different setup, she would also get less water. So no fertilizer on a resting orchid. And some hybrids do have a rest, but not many. So I just wanted to make that distinction. Resting could be one reason, but that doesn't mean there's no new growth and there is no new roots coming. The fact that this orchid is a species, it has its specific needs, as opposed to, let's say, a hybrid that at some point in time is in between new roots and new growth, like you saw with my Moscow. Not getting enough fertilizer is also stress inducing to orchids and orchids respond to stress in various different ways. First of all, stress can cause many negative side effects and that in our case with regards to fertilizing, getting it wrong, deficiencies, all of that nasty stuff can happen when we stress our orchids out and we don't realize it all too quickly. But a form of stress on orchids that are non-bloomers will also induce blooms. So if you have a non-bloomer and you're giving it enough light and you have the anthocyanin signs and it should be blooming, but it doesn't, it's growing really well, stop fertilizing. My Vanda Donosauniana here is a classic example, years and years and years, see how big it's grown and only this year in 2021 did it bloom for me and i'm not going to take credit for the blooming except for the fact that this orchid has been through the ringer this year a lot of stress has been put on it i kept fertilizing so i'm not going to mince my words here it was not because i stopped fertilizing this orchid but it is a classic example of what stress can do to initiate blooming this orchid had a copper treatment debacle, which was not a great thing for the vellum on the roots. So it had to deal with that. It couldn't absorb the nutrients as well that I was giving it. And on top of it, it also had water issues because of my RO supply problems throughout the summer. This is a drinker. It needs a lot of water. 
I couldn't give it what it needed. I had to do 50 mains water and 50 RO water. My mains water is rubbish. Yeah, so the stress this orchid had to deal with this summer, in my opinion, was the reason why it bloomed. And I can tell you, do not fertilize an orchid that is growing beautifully, producing sheath after sheath after sheath. If you've got signs of anthocyanin, everything is there. All the signs are there. Great root system. Why isn't my orchid blooming? Stop fertilizing. Initiate a form of stress to the orchid that it wants to fight for survival. Fighting for survival, they need blooms. So there's that. Can you do it? I struggle with not fertilizing my orchids, but stopping the fertilizer is one way to get a non-bloomer to bloom. This beautiful east-facing shelf is still full of goodness and there is a flurry of activity on these shelves. And yet, I have stopped fertilizing for at least a month. And that is because the temperatures are gonna drop from something that they agree with to something they just don't agree with, meaning they're going inside at night, coming back outside during the day, but because of the temperature being so radical in its change from agreeable to not agreeable, I am stopping fertilizer at this point in time for at least a month, no matter if my orchids have new growth, have a sheath, are in bud. Because the metabolism of the orchids is going to drop faster than what they would do to kickstart growing if this were spring and temperatures were heating up. Orchids are very, very quick to respond to something they don't like and react accordingly as opposed to, oh, this is nice, let's get growing. So for the next month to six weeks, while these orchids are getting used to what is happening to them temperature-wise, this is also an acclimating process. I am stopping fertilizer and that is my last point. Do not fertilize if your temperatures change radically because of the season especially going into the reverse of what orchids prefer. Their metabolism will not be able to manage what you're putting into the pot until such a time that they have acclimated to what is happening now, as in, you know, especially going into winter, in our case here in the Northern Hemisphere. Every bit of fertilizer that they've had up until now, because they're pushing new growths or in sheath or in bud, is plenty, plenty, plenty for four to six weeks. And stopping the fertilizer right now will also stop any salt buildup on the pots. That doesn't mean that the normal watering can't happen, but with plain water, absolutely no fertilizer. And then for those of us heading into winter, we can start again with fertilizer at a lower concentration throughout the winter months. My last point being, temperature drop, stop fertilizing for four to six weeks. They've got plenty from everything that we've given them up to this point. Oh my goodness, the evening sun. I had to show you my top shelf in the blooming alley at this moment with this light. But wow, 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 wow. Anyway, before I lose this beautiful light and it ruins the whole effect, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope this video was useful. I hope maybe that you look at your collection and say, whoa, this might be an ideal time to check what's going on. Know that many of the pointers I've mentioned in this video apply to any time of year for any orchid, it, it doesn't just apply to the Northern Hemisphere where I'm at. Spring, summer, fall, winter. If your orchids are doing any of the things that I mentioned in this video, stop fertilizing. It has nothing to do with where I'm at and that I'm heading into brrrr temperatures. But isn't this so heartwarming? Oh gosh, I love it. So happy to be able to share this little snippet, this clip. And if you've seen this clip, I'm so happy that you stayed throughout the entire video. Thank you very much for watching. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition. Please stay safe. Take care. Bye.